Good day, folks. Nice of you to join us for another midweek mini Bible study. We have a double feature for you today. We're going to start out with Pastor Joe. He's going to take us through a psalm study. And then we're also going to hear from uh, Brian Taylor. He's going to kind of give us a rundown about how things have been going during COVID-19, specifically with regard to, to spiritual growth and direction in his home on Sunday. It's kind of a neat thing. I'm excited for you guys to learn from Pastor Joe and also from Brian. Take care and thanks again for joining us. Hey everyone, my name is Pastor Joe. I'm the youth pastor here at Park Avenue Bible Church, for those of you who don't know me. And today we're going to be continuing our study through the Psalms. We started last week with Pastor Phil and, and we're going to continue this in Psalm 3. And so we're doing this to hopefully provide you with some encouragement and encourage you on your faith while we aren't able to meet together. So we'll be looking again at Psalm number three. So if you can grab your Bibles and follow along, that would be awesome. So Psalm three was as a Psalm written by David. And he wrote this as his son was attempting a coup. So his son Absalom is trying to overthrow him. He's taken Jerusalem and David had to run out of there to save his life because his son was trying to come and kill him. So it's in the midst of this situation that David finds himself in and he writes this psalm. So we're gonna we're gonna look at these in a couple different chunks and we'll, we'll start with the first two verses. So he says, O Lord, how many are my foes? Many are rising against me. Many are saying of my soul, there is no salvation for him in God. And so David is praying, talking to the Lord and just telling him what's going on of how their enemies are popping up all around him and they're all telling him there's no hope for you. God has abandoned you. And and for and I think it's really cool to see how David takes this discouraging hopelessness that he's experiencing and he takes it directly to God and expresses, well, this is God, this is what's happening to me. But then let's continue for the next, next uh, four verses. So verses three to six. He says, but you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory, and the lifter of my head. I cried aloud to the Lord, and he answered me from his holy hill. I lay down and slept. I woke up again, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of many thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. I find it quite amazing how David is what most of us would see as a terrifying, hopeless uh, situation that he finds himself in, and to see how David clings to the Lord through that. The thing if I find myself in the same place that David was, that I, I would call out to the Lord, but my prayer would likely look a lot more like, God, why is this happening? Why me? Um, where are you? And there are small hints of that but for the most part David is just expressing complete dependence on God and that's quite amazing I love the the imagery that he uses of of saying God is his shield and of all these enemies rising up against him and and just shielding him from their weapons from the the hurtful things the discouraging things that they're saying and like God just completely shielding him not affecting him anymore um, and so just from those things happening and then as he turns his trust in God the shield goes up and he kind of expresses that when he says God is the lifter of his head of like in discouraging and hopeless times that God as he trusts in him lifts his head like we would lift the head of a child who's crying saying like it's okay it's okay just look at me um, and then also in verse 5 just the simple truth of he says I lay down and slept and woke again. Of God sustained me last night. When I slept and woke up, God was sustaining me. And I trust that he will continue to do that today. And so, as a result of all these things, David has no reason that he to fear because he knows that God is with him. God has sustained me. God is my shield. And David is completely dependent on God. And so that's the theme we see in the last two verses. So we'll read them. So in verses 7 and 8, he says, Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for you strike all my enemies on the cheek. You break the teeth of the wicked. Salvation belongs to the Lord. 
your blessing be on your people. So these verses may seem, or verse 7 may seem a little harsh to us, but what David is doing is he's, again, expressing his dependence on God to act. He's not saying that I will go out and defeat, but he's saying, God, I need you and I'm dependent on you and you, I serve you. You, you are my protector. You are my shield. And he's praying like, God, rise up and save me from what I'm going through. And so again, just complete dependence on God, right? It's God that will save him. It's God that is his confidence. God is his victory, his salvation. And so for us, we may not be running for our lives um, from people who are seeking our life, but we are in a, a discouraging time, uh, hopeless, the overused word of, of isolation. Um, and I think, I know for myself, the temptation has been to kind of mask what's going on by just watching TV or just busy myself around the house and not, not actually let what's going on affect me. But it, it is, it's discouraging and I don't like it. I don't like not being able to see you guys and, and meet with people. And so the example that David is, is to confess, to pour out our heart to the Lord and then to, to remind ourselves and also trust in that God is with us and that he is here and, and that he is concerned for us. Um, I think because David expresses his trust in the Lord, but I think he does it because he does trust, but also to remind himself that God is here, that God is with him and that he can trust. I think for us as families to not just do this alone, but to talk and to remind each other that we can trust in the Lord is something really important, something that we need to continue to do. Is the Lord is incredibly near and he does care for us. And it's so good for us to pour out our hearts to him. Because when there there are lots of times when it seems like there is no hope and that this will go on forever. But as we turn our eyes from the situations that we find ourselves in and pour our hearts out to the Lord and trust in him, that hope and joy is found there. And so uh, I hope that brought you some encouragement. And I'm just going to pray to bring us to a close. Lord, um, I thank you that you are here, and that you care for all of us so much. And Lord, that as we pour out our heart to you, that you hear us and that you care for us. And Lord, that you are, as we trust in you, that you are a shield, that you lift our heads from from sorrow and despair um, to joy in you. Lord, I pray that we would take the time to do that, that we do that as families, that we would intentionally turn our eyes from, from COVID-19 to you. Not that we ignore what's going on, but Lord, that we find the hope that you bring. Thank you so much um, for your love and your care for us. Amen. Good day, Park Avenue. This is uh, Phil Houston and Brian Taylor uh, coming to you from my office. And the reason we're, we're going to uh, do this post today is Brian's been doing some pretty interesting things at his house uh, during the COVID-19 shutdown. And, uh, and, and as one of the elders, I'd just like to ask Brian and interview him a little bit uh, to see what he's been doing so that he can share that with you. Now, this is my idea. This wasn't Brian coming to me and saying, I have some important stuff I'd like to tell Park Gav. And he doesn't even have any chocolate bars. It's more just me knowing that me knowing what he's doing from what he's shared. And, and I just think it's great. And so I asked him to share so that's, that's kind of the angle here. It's, it's me asking Brian to share. It's not Brian who really has something important to say. So I'm just gonna ask Brian a few questions and uh, he's gonna respond and we'll uh, hopefully be able to share a little bit with you about some of the things he's been doing. So uh, Brian, church has changed dramatically for us in the last couple of months. What have you and your family been doing to doing differently now that we can't meet as a big group? Well, um, on the first week when this all kind of started, when the elders decided to stop doing church as we know it, I had a deep thought. I asked myself, how will God feel if as soon as church stops being done for me by other people, will that be the end of it? Am I just a consumer? The 
And then the next thing I asked is, what is the easiest thing to do? And the answer I came up with is nothing. The easiest thing to do is nothing. I thought about that for a while, and I decided that I would be ashamed to do nothing, and that my religion better go deeper than just being a consumer. So I decided to do something about it. They say children really pick up on your values by watching your actions, which can be kind of a scary thought. So I didn't want my kids to think that church doesn't matter to dad just because the doors are closed on Sunday. Awesome. So that means you've been doing church at home. Okay, well, tell us about your home church. What, what does home church look like? I decided to make my family into the church. I gave each person a responsibility for our service, which we have on Sunday mornings in our living room. Uh, Thorin is the elder. So he gives announcements, opening welcome, a short message about anything that he is learning from his own Bible times. Corey is the worship leader, so she chooses hymns from the old red church hymn books. We have a few of those at home. And she gets the singing going, and she has a little scripture reading time that she does as well. Uh, Tarek is the pastor. He's preaching a 10-part series right now on the Ten Commandments. <laughs> So he's finding that pretty challenging, but he, he likes it. They all want to keep doing it. Uh, Jody's in charge of communion, which was the best thing I ever thought of. She makes a nice homemade bread, and we have uh, communion every Sunday with her homemade bread, and she shares a bit. And uh, I wrap up the service with a little message from the Bible and a kneeling prayer. A kneeling prayer. Yeah. Why would you do a kneeling prayer? Uh, I just... We all just kneel down and we just want to be as, you know, there's some things that may be in the church service here we feel too awkward to do, but in our own homes, why not, right? Yeah. Oh, I think that's really cool. It just brings a sense of sincerity to it all and yeah, and makes us feel like we're... Like you're humbling yourselves before God. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, it's hard to do that when there's 200 people around. Okay, so you're doing all these things, and have you noticed any changes in your kids? Like, these are not their typical roles. I'm really surprised to hear that they would do those things. So, so have you seen any changes in them? Well, I mean, the very first Sunday, I didn't even give them hardly any notice. Like, I gave them the night before, about an hour before bedtime, I told them what we were going to do. Yeah. So they all scrambled up to their rooms, and they were really excited about it. Like, they wanted to prepare some deep thoughts and yeah they were like um they love it mm -hmm. like the kids all are we gonna do that again next sunday dad and they all wanna this this coming sunday we all scramble the jobs around so everyone's getting a new a new responsibility yeah they like preparing for it um and i've come to understand that they aren't they aren't as helpless as i thought they were Mm. Like sometimes in our minds, our children kind of need everything done for them. But when you give them the responsibility and, and actually have a positive expectation, it's amazing how they live up to that. Mm -hmm. So did you teach them how to do these things or did you just say you're doing this and you were expected, like you just waited to see what would happen? I didn't teach them nothing. I mean, after attending here for uh, for their whole lives and seeing what goes into, at least from the pew, what mm -hmm. goes into each responsibility, they had it in their minds enough to enough to get them going. Yeah, and would you say that you've been pleasantly surprised? Oh yeah, it's been it's been pretty cool. Like, um, you know, the sermons aren't super deep, and the songs are just the old favorites, but. That's what I love. And, you know, every Sunday I've just, something, something has just been jumped out at me. And I just, I'm just so, it's made me really proud of my children too. No, oh, that's really cool. Um, so you, would you say, so you've definitely been learning things from doing it this way. Would you have any, any recommendations for us, at, like from what you've learned? Uh, like for any of the families at PABC, maybe people who are watching this? Well, the children, they, they offer up, a, you know, they offer up a, 
kind of, I don't know how to say this for sure, but it's like they're offer offering up a pure gift to God. Hmm. Like, it's really real. And, you know, it's not all rehearsed. They just, they're just innocent and, and they're offering up them true, their true selves. And that's cool to see. And, um, you know, what do I have here? Sometimes, something's more pure and true about it and pleasing to God than anything that I may have ever said or done in church myself as an adult. Mm -hmm. That's just, it just, it's, and it's had a lot of value to me. Mm -hmm. Like it's genuine. Yeah. It's the, well, in their case, lit literal childlike offering. Yeah. It's been really cool. Mm -hmm. And just doing communion every Sunday and doing the kneeling prayer and letting the children, each one of their responsibilities, I let them have the freedom to do it however they want. Mm -hmm. You know, they know what, what, that they're going to have a, that Tarek knows he's going to give a little sermon and a prayer, but I don't tell him what to talk about or what to say or do. He does his own thing. And he decided that he wanted to preach on the Ten Commandments. So he's been, he, I, I think he looks them up in his concordance and finds different places in the Bible where each different thing is mentioned. And yeah. Oh, he does. He puts a lot of work into it. And would you say you're learning from that? Even though, I mean, the Ten Commandments, you know those pretty well, but are you learning something? Like every Sunday, you know, I can't think of anything jumping into my head right now, but every Sunday I leave with just a thought, like, oh, I never really quite thought of it like that before. Mm -hmm. You know, and he's not, it might not even be from something he said, but just connecting the dots through the whole morning, you know? Yeah, it's been, it's been pretty cool. And all the kids have, equally contributed cool cool well that's a that's something that that i think every every one of us needs to hear i mean there's there's going to be times when i don't know <laughs> i don't even know how to say this really but mate when you need to make your faith your own we talk a lot about that like how kids need to make their faith their own and we often associate that after you leave like mom and dad aren't around so now I make my faith my own but this sounds like you're actually doing that like you're giving them a chance to discover and talk about the Lord and their relationship with God without even any help from you you're just turning them loose well I had to decide like on the very first day I was like well when suddenly church isn't being done for me I can either stop doing it or carry on doing something you know mm -hmm. yeah and so I don't know, I just felt like it was the right thing to do. And, and um, I think one thing that people could consider, I mean, I looked up a Bible verse, Psalm 8, 2, says, from the lips of children and infants you have ordained praise. Mm -hmm. You know, before people get, before people become adults and have all their sarcasm and, and reasons and thoughts, sometimes there's a pureness in a, praise that only children can give yeah that's cool well thanks a lot brian i appreciate you coming in and doing this and uh looking forward to hearing about the rest of the big 10 and uh Tarek, i'd really like to chat with you about getting you into the pulpit sometime i think that'd be pretty awesome thanks brian well there you have it folks we hope you've enjoyed this uh midweek mini bible study and uh and sharing time uh, parents, I would really encourage you guys, if there's something that you're doing at, at home that you'd like to share with us, please tell us about it. We're all looking for different ideas on how to teach our kids. Thanks again to Pastor Joe for teaching us from the Psalms, and we'll see you folks on Sunday and next week. Take care. God bless.